Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, video where uh, I'll be finishing the capacitated facility location model with single sourcing problem. I'll be finishing it in the sense that we'll uh, formulate the problem in Excel and solve it. So in the previous video we saw um, the how we uh, set up our uh, decision variables, object to function and constraints and saw that all our decision variables including the y variables and the x variables they are all going to be 0, 1 or binary variables here because here the idea is that you are going to assign each of the demand locations to one of the supply regions and all supply going out to a demand location will go out of a single supply region. So given that's the case we will have to set it up as a binary variable. So, so let's let's actually solve it. So first I'm going to set up my uh, decision variable space. right? So I'm going to do it the usual way. There are a few things that we will that we'll have to do uh, differently this time, and you will see that this is the open close variable. So these are my x variables. So I am going to color them separately, even though they are all going to be binary. But still, uh, these are the y variables, which are going to be tell us whether a particular plant is open or uh, closed, right? Open or not open, right? So that's that's what we have. So with that, we can now write our, um, uh, we have to write our um, objective function. But if you remember, in the objective function, you'll notice that when we write this objective function, we not only have the Cijs and the Xijs, we also have to multiply it with the corresponding Djs, right? So the Djs are all here. Now when we write the sum product function for the objective function, we'll need four rows. So when we are multiplying those, thing, those things together, we want four rows of demand also. Otherwise, it, it sort of doesn't make sense. So uh, to be consistent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my demand here. And I'm going to make four rows of demand. It's just I'm just going to copy it out four times. That's all I'm doing. Demand is 50, 70, 60, 80. Just making four rows because we need it uh, to be consistent when we write the sum product function. So here, unfortunately, we can't write a single sum product function. We'll have to write two separate ones. And again, and the reason for that is if you go back here, you'll notice that in this sum product function, there are only two elements. But here, there are three different elements. So that will again not work out uh, well with uh, writing a single sum product function. So the objective is going to be first we'll write the uh, fixed cost right, I'm going to split this up I'm going to say fixed cost first there's no reason to split it up you can write it as in a single line but I'm, I want to split it up. So the fixed cost is the fixed cost values, comma, uh, whether or not the plants are open. So if the plants are open, the fixed costs are assessed. If the plants are not open, the fixed costs are not going to be assessed, right? It's as straightforward as that. That's the fixed cost piece. Then the variable cost piece. Now this is uh, where, let me insert a row. Call it cost calculation. So the variable cost piece is uh, some product of the variable cost values and the xijs. Now usually this would be enough, but the xijs here remember are one zero variables. So we have to talk about the quantities, and the quantities are essentially the demand values right so that is why we need four rows of demand values because there are four rows of supply location four rows and four columns of uh, uh, cost values and four rows and four columns of xijs so we need four rows of demand values also right so this is only for this remember this is only for the single sourcing case in the non-single sourcing case everything that we did last week you'd set it up that way but with single sourcing this is how you'd set it up 
So as you can see, you could have written fixed and variable cost together on a single cell. You'd write one sum product, then just say plus another sum product. Instead, I wrote it this way, I'd say total cost. And this is our objective, is the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost values. That's my total cost. This is where my objective is, so let me just color it green, just because it's money, I guess. Um, I'm going to do that, right? So that's my objective. So I have my decision variable set up. I have my objective uh, set up. Now let's uh, do the constraints. So first let's begin with the supplier constraints, supplier capacity constraints. Capacity. Right. Now remember when we wrote capacity constraints on uh, this time, we have to write them as uh, demand times uh, the xij's uh, demand times X, xij's have to be less than or equal to the capacity but oh i'm sorry when you write the capacity here you have to multiply it to the y variable the capacity is only available if the plant is open if the plant is not open the capacity is in fact not available i'm sorry i made the i made the mistake here but so on the right hand side, the capa uh, will be 110 only if the plant is open. If the plant is not open, the capacity will be zero, in which case all the x's have also should be zero, right? So let's write this constraint. So this is the sub amount supplied. And this is the supply available. So the amount supplied out of Denver, remember, now if you look at the formula here, it is the product of demand and the X values, demand and X values and so on. So even the left hand side here, I'm going to write it as a sum product function. Is a sum product of the corresponding XIJ variables and the demand variables. Again, a good reason to have the have four rows of demand variables available. So you're multiplying the corresponding X variables with the corresponding demand variables. That's the left hand side of the capacity constraint. And the right hand side of the capacity constraint is just the capacity times whether or not the plant is open, right? So this part is the same as what we had before, capacity times whether or not the plant is open. But the left hand side of the constraint is in fact different. Usually we just add the X values because but the there the x values represented the number of units transported from say denver to boston denver to dallas and so on but because we are doing single sourcing we're just doing assignment so here the values will only be ones and zeros because that's the case we have to multiply it with the corresponding value of demand to make sure that the capacities are uh, in fact constrained so with this i can just copy the formulas down it should work right so the right hand side works, you're multiplying the capacity with the corresponding y variable. The left hand side will be the corresponding x variables and uh, the demand values, right? So that's the capacity constraint. Now let's write demand constraints. Constraints, right? demand constraints are for the demand locations and I like to write them as columns right this will be the amount supply uh, this will be the not the amount supplied so this is the uh, I'm just going to say left hand side and right hand side of the constraint so by LHS and RHS I mean uh, the left hand side of the constraint and the right hand side of the constraint here the right hand side will always be equal to one because essentially you're doing single sourcing. So the right hand side will always be equal to one, right? Now the left hand side is the sum of all the X variables coming into Boston. So you're saying that uh, this variable will be one if Boston is assigned to Denver. This variable will be one if Boston is assigned to Atlanta. This is one if Boston is assigned to Chicago, and this is one if Boston is assigned to Tulsa, 
So the sum of these four variables has to be equal to one. Uh, by that we say that only one of these variables has to be one and exactly one of these variables has to be equal to one. Not all four of them cannot be zeros because Boston has to be assigned to one of the supply locations, right? So that's my left-hand side of the constraint. It's the one that you have for same. Now with this, the, the uh, data entry is done. Now let's put it into solver and solve. Okay. Objective, uh, this is where my objective is, the total cost. It's a cost minimization problem. Changing variable cells, now these are all my changing variable cells, including the X variables and the Y variables, right? Now let's write the constraints. First supply constraint, all the amounts supplied have to be less than or equal to the supply that's available at the supply locations. Right, so all the left hand side less than right hand side. Next, all the left hand sides have to be equal to the right hand side values which are all one. Oops, I'm sorry, this is the four. We're gonna J, this begins at J. Okay, good. So those are my so J9 through uh, uh, L9 have to be equal to J10 through, sorry, J9 through M9 have to be equal to J10 through M10, right? So that, those are my demand constraints or the single sourcing constraints. Once that's done, the last constraint that we have to write are the binary constraint. We are saying that all our variables here, every single one of them, the X's and the Y's, they're all binary variables, right? Right, so we'll click on OK. So now that this is done, the only thing left is to click on solve. Now, uh, this is going to take a while because it's not strictly a linear programming problem. This is a, a non-linear, uh, this is a binary programming problem. All variables are binary. So it is going to take a little while to solve, right? So, oh, okay. <laughs> I misspoke. Solver found a decent solution already. So let's, um, let's see what's going on. So according to this, we are opening uh, the Atlanta plant and the Tulsa plant. Now the Atlanta plant is going to supply Boston and St. Paul, and the Tulsa plant is going to supply Dallas and uh, Los Angeles. The total fixed costs, uh, these are all dollar values. Let me just make them dollar values and no decimals, please. Okay. So the total fixed cost is 1.85 million, total variable cost is 315,000, and the total cost is $2.165 million, right? So you are exactly, so each demand location is, is assigned to exactly a single supply location. So Boston is assigned to Atlanta, Dallas is assigned to Tulsa, Los Angeles is assigned to Tulsa, and St. Paul is assigned to Atlanta, right? And then this is how, uh, so total amount, so the amount supplied and supply available are are mostly matching. So Atlanta plant, you're using up all the supply. With the Tulsa plant, you're using up most of the supply. There's about 10,000 units left, right? And that's it. So that is how you solve the uh, uh, single sourcing problem in Excel, right? So the main difference here is that all variables are binary and uh, you're just assigning demand locations to supply locations, right? Okay. Thank you.